is securely legible. And well, how can a man like Tishendorf be so sure about this text and introduce it into public and get rid of the very best text we already had and a lot of copies have been made from this text in very early times. Okay, then Alexandria and their library was famous for the collection of books of old times especially in astrology and witchcraft it was burned down by Christians about the 6th century because of the, uh, this aggressive evil that came from and well in Alexandria we had a lot of complaints from Christian from Greece because they had the different texts and they were really complaining about this more about that can be told by Professor Walter Feit and he has a web page this is www.amazingdiscoveries.org uh, please look it up it will be very interesting for you now the received text the textus recepticus is the old Byzantine text with 1900 copies in agreement it was written in Koine Greek of which hundreds of words cannot be really good translated into classical Greek the early church used kind of Greek manuscripts and rejected the Alexandrian versions which were based on corrupt version with Origenos and other Gnostic versions and I have to tell you about this Origenos or Origenos is actually one of these early church fathers from the second century and he taught that Jesus was a created being who did not have eternal existence as God and you can look it up in the Encyclopedia Britannica volume 16 from 1936 it's page 900 to 902 interesting to see so please look it up and the Bible says O Timothy in Timothy 6 verse 20 O Timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane vain bubblings and oppositions of science falsely so called which some professing have erred concerning the face grace with the Amen so please do that please avoid profane vain babblings and oppositions of science because this is often false science and the word behind science is Gnosis. Okay, now I'm talking about Origenus and from the book Morals and Dogma, page 399. This doctrine of transmigration of soul obtained, as Porphyry informs us, among the Persians and the Magi. It was held in the East and the West, and that from the remotest antiquity. Herodotus found it among the circle of migrations from one human body through animals, fishes and birds to another human body 3000 years sorry what am I talking about is this yeah come on the Kurds, the Chinese, the Kabbalists all held the same doctrine so Originus held and Bishop Synesius the letter of whom had been initiated and whom thus prayed to God, and now it comes here, O Father, grant that my soul reunited to the light may not be plunged again into the defilements of earth. So the Gnostics held. And even the disciples of Christ inquired if the man who was born blind was not so punished for some sin that he had committed before his birth sorry what's that awful rubbish look first they're talking about rebirth or and now they say he has that disciples were talking about sin committed before birth now let's look into the text what this man really said John 9 verse 2 says and his disciples ask him saying master who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind it was asking specially who did sin not when did he sin but who did sin this man or his parents 
has nothing to do with the rubbish that the Freemasons are trying to put in here. Now, Origenes was born Anno Domini 134 or 135, answering Celsus who had objected that the Christians had a concealed doctrine set inasmuch as the essential and important doctrines and the principles of Christianity are openly taught, it is foolish to object that there are other things that are recondite, for this is common to Christian discipline with that of those philosophers in those teachings some things were exoteric and some esoteric and it is enough to say that it was so with some of the disciples of Pythagoras that's page 544 you see what Origenes was for a person he was a special initiated person therefore the Romans left him Origenes gives much information as to mysteries of the Orphites and there is no doubt that all the Gnostic sects had mysteries and initiations. They all claimed to possess a secret doctrine coming to them directly from Jesus Christ, different from that of the Gospels and Epistles and superior to those communications which in their eyes were merely exoteric. Again, that was of the book Merrills and Dagmar, page 542. Now, the mysteries were open to the fidelis or faithful only, and no spectators were allowed at the communion. Tertullian, who died about 216, says in his Apology, none are admitted without an oath of secrecy. We appeal to to our Thracian and Elysian mysteries and we are especially bound to this caution because we were proof faceless if we should not only provoke heaven but draw up on our heads the utmost rigor of human displeasure and should strangers betray us they know nothing but by report and hearsay far hence ye profane is the prohibition from all holy mysteries near me. This is how they call people who don't know profane. Bishop Clemens of Alexandria, born in 191, says in his Dramata that he cannot explain the mysteries because he should thereby, according to the old proverb, Put a sword into the hands of a child, page 544 in Morals and Dagma. Kirill, Bishop of Jerusalem, was born in 315 and died in 386. In his Catechesis, he says, the Lord spake in parables to his hearers in general, but to his disciples he explained in private the parables and allegories which he spoke in public. The splendor of glory is for those who are early enlightened. Obscurity and darkness are the portions of the unbelievers and ignorant. Just so the church discovers its mysteries to those who have advanced beyond the class of catechumens. We employ obscure terms with others, say the Freemasons in page 545. In their special book, but I tell you the truth. Matthew says in chapter 13, verse 35, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundations of the world. So Jesus is here revealing secrets, not hiding secrets. Also, the parables of Jesus are made to reveal, not to keep. So, St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, to reveal, not to keep. So, St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo, and uh, who knows him well, knows uh, about him. A um, uh, very interesting story, I think. But 
Let's look into that matter what the Freemasons talking about. He was born in 347 and died in 430.